Another characteristic of polynomial functions that are that are of interest to us is this idea about in behavior. In behavior, boy, that can go a lot of ways. In behavior talks about what does the graph do the farther we get out towards infinity and the, the other direction. What does the beginning and the ends of the graph kind of do? So what we look for is a couple of characteristics within the particular function. If we have our standard polynomial function, we're going to use something called the leading coefficient test, which means all we're really interested in is this first term. And if that first term is very large, then it will determine what does the ends of the graph do. So for example, if n is odd, which means I might have x to the third, x to the seventh, x to the ninth, whatever it might mean, I'm going to get a graph that has this particular function or this particular type of a flow, which means that on my left side, the graph begins very low, and then on the right side, the graph takes away very high. Now, this is true with when I have any index n that's odd and my a sub n is greater than zero, which means I have a positive value in that first one. So what does this tell me? It tells me my end behavior, and I might designate it like this. So when I look towards the left, my graph is coming from below. And if I look to the right, my graph is going up high. So that tells me my values start off very low. And as my graph continues, my values gain steam and continue growing. Second graph over here, this is still a graph where my where my index is odd. And so what's my in behavior telling me? What's going on here? Well, this one also too is, let me give you one more definition. This is uh, a sub n is less than zero. So my leading coefficient is negative. This tells me that the graph to the left, I have high values. Um, I might want to mark that. And then on the right side, there we go. And so this is just again a notation to give me give me an idea what's happening with the end behavior. Behavior. This starts off with very high values. It goes through all the interesting stuff, all the whoop de doos and the little roller coasters, and then the end behavior tails on off, and the values become increasingly less. Now we're going to learn later. We're not going to expect any other changes in direction in between the end behaviors. We're looking at what happens at the ends. We have two instances, examples, where n is even, and we're going to say this one is also um, a positive. So when the index is even, my n behavior, well, it starts out with high values. It comes through and does all this fascinating stuff near the axis or near where, near the changes in direction. And then as the graph gets done with all the fun stuff, it tails off into a positive direction with increasing values. And then lastly, this one, last one is an example where I have my leading coefficient is negative. And so what is its end behavior doing? Well, it starts off with low values and it ends up with low values. So those are some ways that we want to start to look for when we look at polynomial functions is, well, what's it doing way at the beginning of the graph and way at the end of the graph? The math words for that is its end behavior. And the way we can determine that is by looking at its leading coefficient and looking at its leading coefficient test. So let me show you an example. f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. Of these four opportunities here, which one does this graph represent as far as its end behavior is concerned? So we look at the leading coefficient. In this case is x cubed. Cubed is an odd number. Then we look at the coefficient of that x cubed. Is it positive or negative? In this case, it's positive. There's an understood one right there. So it fits in this first idea right here, where its end behavior then 
um, begins with small values at the beginning of the graph and or at the beginning of the function. And as the function continues to move out, at some point, it's going to end with increasing values. Now, one question I, I didn't touch on too much is, well, why do we just look at the leading coefficient? Why, why does it, why does it matter what the other ones are doing? Not necessarily, because notice as my x values continue to get large, which of the terms start to overwhelm all the other terms? I hope you recognize that the x cubed is a very powerful term. It grows a lot quicker than an x squared term does or an x term. So with very large values, this x cubed starts to define what the entire function starts to look like. So because of that, we can look at the first term to get an idea what happens when we have um, large x's or large absolute value of x's that determines our end behavior.